everyone, this is Angela Fields, the creator and CEO of Curly Coily Trusses. I hope you are having a, a very peaceful Labor Day weekend and hopefully Hurricane Dorian stays off the coast and leaves everybody alone. Everybody alone. But by popular request, I wanted to come in real quick and do a quick recap of all of the tips that I gave this week, and this is in getting the best results with your style, with Curly Coily Tresses styling products. Real quick, I want to mention, if you haven't already done so, download a free copy of my ebook. You can do that on the website or through my, my link in my bio and Instagram or on my Facebook page. So again, grab a free copy of my ebook, Popping Curls All Day Every Day. Keep in mind that I will be speaking at the upcoming Hair She Grows event in Orlando, Florida. That is September 22nd. You can get the details for that to get tickets and whatnot in the link in my bio. So be sure and check that out as well. Okay, so doing our recap, day one, it was apply moisturizing styling products to water-saturated hair. Very key for trapping that moisture in your hair and not in your towel or your t-shirt on the bathroom floor. So start with water saturated hair. Step two was to wrap, cover, and protect pineapple hair with silk or satin. That could be a scarf, it could be a bonnet, it could be a pillowcase. I use a scarf and a pillowcase to make sure I'm covered if I should lose the scarf during the night. On day two, product penetration requires open cuticles and results in game changing moisturization and hydration. Again, product penetrating through open cuticles results in game-changing moisturization and hydration. Just applying products to already dry hair, um, you can get a conditioned feel, but you can also get a greasy feel. So again, game-changing moisturization and hydration, lasting moisturization and hydration is accomplished by applying your moisturizing styling products to saturated hair where the cuticles are open. PH appropriate products will open cuticles, not water temperature. So this is is um, is written about, is talked about, um, and it is very um, it can be very confusing because you see a lot of information everywhere. But temperature does not open and close the cuticles along the hair surface. PH does, so that's important as well. Now um, let's see. Stepping into day three, let's see what our tips were then. Normal hair pH is between 4.5 and 5.5. Products applied to closed cuticles, again, will sit on top of the hair and create a conditioned field, if not a greasy field. But when you're applying the products to water-saturated hair where the cuticles have been opened by a pH-appropriate product, that's the lasting hydration and moisturization that our hair craves. That's how you get it to last beyond day one, day two, into day five, six, seven. So this is a wash and go from 10 days ago, and I still have very good definition. So that is uh, important there. Co-washing can be a high porosity strategy, while shampooing can be a low porosity strategy. And what this means is when you have high porosity hair, your cuticles tend to stay open, and that could be from uh, physical trauma, it could be from chemical damage, but your cuticles tend to stay open. So this means your hair welcomely receives moisture and hydration, but it loses it equally because the cuticles stay open and it can leave the hair shaft just as easy as it came in. Low porosity hair means your cuticles are staying closed. And so if you're only co-washing with low porosity hair, you're going to get buildup on top of the hair shaft. Nothing's getting in. And your hair will respond in looking um, dry and looking frizzy. And what it is is just product on the hair surface. So knowing your porosity is important to knowing the best approach to take for uh, products you use and what your regimen should be. So if you know that you have high porosity hair, co-washing could be a very effective strategy. You may also want to shampoo in between, but co-washing can be an effective strategy. And if you have low porosity hair, shampooing can be an effective strategy. If you like co-washing, you don't need to shampoo every time. Just make sure that you're doing it on occasion to keep from getting product buildup because you need something to get inside that hair shaft to get the lasting moisturization and hydration. And then going to day four of our review here. Protein sensitivity is something that is frequently talked about. But here... Um, Hair is made mostly of protein, so I want to make sure you understand that hair is made mostly of protein 
and it needs protein from your diet as well as through products applied on the hair. However, the best types of protein for one person varies very differently from the next person. So you have to find out what's the best types of proteins that work for you. And you will quickly be able to find it if you pay attention to the signs. Also understand that when you're using protein, you need to follow the protein with the moisturizing treatment unless the product you're using incorporates protein as well as moisture in the product. Then it's not as important to follow with the moisturizer, but if you end your routine with a protein, especially a deep protein treatment, you may get hair that feels very matted and tangled and mushy and it just doesn't feel like your hair anymore. That's where you need to follow with the moisturizing treatment after the protein. And for most individuals, protein is not needed weekly or every time you do a wash day. It depends on the condition of your hair. But for most individuals, if they're coming from a state of healthy hair, once a month protein treatment is really all they need. You may need it twice a month if you're doing a lot of different things, a lot of direct heat, a lot of physical manipulation, those types of things. You may need protein a bit more frequently if you're doing something of that nature. But again, it's important to understand that the best types of protein varies between individuals. Now, Enrich and Nourish from Curly Coily Tresses both have hydrolyzed oat protein. And I chose hydrolyzed oat protein because it is a hygroscopic humectant, which means it grabs and retains water in the hair shaft. Hydrolyzed, pro hydrolyzed oat protein also film forms, which means it coats the hair and porosity fills, which means it fills in chinks along the hair surface. So it seeks in giving a smoother, moisturized hair strand to help protect it in the longer term from different types of product styling and use and heat and use. So this is the benefit of hydrolyzed oat protein. It also adds luster and helps in reducing breakage and it softens and smooths hair. So I emphasize the importance of hydrolyzed oat protein because it is a protein that is better able to be uh, used or used by more types of hair than some of the other types of proteins. Some of the proteins have the larger bonds and so they may not penetrate as deeply or they may go deeply, but hydrolyzed oat protein has two purposes. It is a protein and it is small enough to penetrate to the deepest layers of the hair shaft, but it's also a humectant. So it draws moisture into the hair shaft, and that's what's key. What's a problem that is faced so often by curlies is dry hair. And so this is where hydrolyzed oat protein has a huge benefit for you. And then the last thing from our final day, our fifth day of, of following these best guidelines, following these guidelines for best results is detangling. When you are detangling, you work in sections and you keep the individual sections separated by either clipping the sections or loosely twisting them so you can come back. This prevents shrinkage from happening. Have you ever been styling your hair and as you're doing something over here, you see this side doing this. When this happens, your hair is retangling and you just detangled it so you don't want that to happen. So you either loosely twist it and so you can keep the section that's just been detangled separate or either you clip it to keep it separated from the rest of your hair. Tighter curl patterns require wet detangling with some type of product with slip is not as important for the looser curl patterns, but for the tighter curl patterns like what you're looking at here, you need saturated hair with a product with some type of slip. Um, when you start detangling, you start at the ends and you work your way up the hair shaft. And the biggest reason for that is what's wishboning. This is when someone grabs your hair here and they just pull it apart. Wishboning is not good for hair. It breaks hair and if you're like me, you're tender headed, it hurts. So that is not something you want done to your hair for breakage and then for pain's sake. So you start at the ends, wet hair, fully saturated with your product and, you, and you're stretching the hair out because this also helps in getting shed hairs out of your way. So you can pull those shed hairs out as you're starting to detangle in the ends and then you work your way up the hair shaft detangling with fingers. Once you have completely finger detangled then you can use a wide tooth comb or you may even want to use a brush. If you're encountering friction which means as you're working that comb through your hair the comb is actually bending backwards then that means you need to switch to a frictionless comb or a wooden comb. Um, I tend to like the wooden combs from Natural Curls Club. Now I did find out the hard way 
that using it in the shower is probably not the best way because mine started, the layers started separating. So I did find a frictionless uh, plastic comb that, I, that has a hook on it so it's easy to use in the shower. And when I'm using my wooden combs, those are when I'm at the vanity doing something different. Uh, maybe like a defined style and I still need to do some additional detangling. Um, so you detangle by sections. Again, you isolate them by twisting or by clipping to keep them separated because you don't want to allow the hair the chance to retangle. So those are a complete review of the five tips that I've shared during the course of the week, but I wanted to give, you, give it to you in a high-level fashion. So if you have any questions, if you want to hear some additional information, just drop some comments below. Thank you so much, and I hope you continue to have a great weekend, and Dorian just goes away. But remember, grab a copy of our free ebook, Poppin' Curls, my free ebook, Poppin' Curls All Day, Every Day. You also want to join my uh, newsletter community where tips and, and whatnot are being emailed out all the time. It's the Luscious Curlies group. Um, you can sign up on my website, which is the same place you can get the free ebook. And then also, I will be speaking at the upcoming Hair She Grows event in Orlando, Florida on September 22nd. So you can get details and tickets by tapping the link um, below or in my bio or from my website. So you can get some details on that as well and buy some tickets. Thanks so much.